What's up everybody? Welcome back to One More Guitar. Thank you for checking out the channel. Uh, today I want to talk about Floyd Rose style bridges. I've heard so many people say that they don't like these types of bridges. And I want to make a video today to show you that they're really not that bad. They've got some good benefits and uh, maybe I can give you some tips on how to make it a little easier for you to set one up. So uh, there's some time codes in the description if you want to uh, jump ahead. So my first experience with the Floyd Rose was I was at work and I was telling a guy that I had started tinkering around with fixing guitars and stuff. And he said, oh, I've got a guitar that needs fixing. So I was like, well, what's the problem? He said, well, I can't restring it. I said, all right, well, he's a beginner and I know that can be a challenge for beginners. So uh, I was like, sure, man, I'll restring your guitar for you. So the next day he comes in the office and he brings the guitar and lays it on the table and I open it up and it's a Charvel with a Floyd Rose on it. And so I looked at it and I was like, what the hell is that? You know, but uh, so I was like, yeah, man, I'll take care of it. I'll take care of it. So I take it to the house and uh, I start working on it and just problems right out of the gate. He had uh, cracked blocks in here where either he or somebody else had over tightened these. And um, it just, it had all kinds of problems. It really was a pain just to get the strings out of the guitar, much less get the whole thing set up. I didn't know what I was doing, right? So I watched some videos and struggled through it. And throughout the entire process, I hated working on that guitar. I mean, I was looking stuff up, I was cussing, I'm calling my friends going, you know, why do people like these guitars? Who wants this? And they laughed and I laughed and they cried and I cried and, you know, but finally I was able to get the guitar uh, to where it would stay in tune and I could play it. And once I got there, um, and I, I couldn't believe how much fun it was. You know, um, it stayed in tune. I could do these dives and pull up on it. And again, the fact that it stayed in tune after all that, it really excited me. And I knew that I had to get one. I could tell just by playing it that I could do some Van Halen kind of stuff, you know, with that bridge that I couldn't do with any of my other guitars. So I knew if for no other reason, I needed to get one just so I could try to learn some of Eddie Van Halen's stuff. So I'll mention that I'm shooting this in the week that Eddie passed away. And it's really sad, I know. Um, he was a great player. But um, I really wanted to try to set this up and thought maybe other people are in the same boat. They want to try to play some Van Halen songs. And so I figured I'd make a video while I was setting this up to see if I could help some other people in the process because they really are a lot of fun. So I'm really not that good at demoing a Floyd Rose. It's not something I use in my everyday playing very much. But... Um, you know, I had to try to show why this thing was fun and some of the benefits of it. So for your amusement, here's me attempting about 30 seconds of eruption. And uh, I know it's not great, but at least maybe you can see how you can use this bar to get some really cool sounds. So let's check that out. Still in tune after all that. Okay, first of all, I know I can't play that song very well, but I had to try. And I really just wanted to show you some of the stuff that you can do with a bridge like this. In more capable hands, you can get some really cool sound effects out of this. Um, but to even try, really, you need this kind of system. Now, I'll mention that there are other bridges out there that will do similar kind of stuff that maybe aren't so complicated, but this is the most common one you see. And uh, this is also the one that you hear the most complaints about. You know, people really have a hard time with this one. So hopefully I can help you learn how to set one of these up. All right, I think I've yammered on enough. Let's get going. Okay, real quick, let's go over the tools we're gonna need here. Um, I've got some wire clippers here just so I can cut the strings. Uh, I've got a Phillips head screwdriver in case we need to mess with the springs on the back of the guitar. And then I've got a set of Allen wrenches here, and uh, what set of Allen wrenches you need will depend on the guitar you've got. I've got uh, an Ibanez guitar, so these use the metric system, so I will use those. Um, and we need the Allen wrenches so we can loosen these blocks, and so we can loosen the nut here. So we'll go ahead and loosen the nut, and then we'll just set these parts to the side for now, and we'll use them later when we put new strings on. All right, so now I'm just gonna take the strings off 
Um, I'll loosen them at the headstock and then I'll loosen the uh, screws at the bridge that hold them in place with the block. So now we want to lock the string into the bridge. If you've never restrung a Floyd Rose guitar before, you might be a little confused about where the ball end of the string goes. You don't actually want to use that at the bridge like you do on a normal guitar. On this guitar, you want to use the end that doesn't have the ball and feed that into the bridge in the hole with the block. And once you've got the string in there, what you do is you use the arm of the tremolo, push it down, and then use your Allen wrench to tighten the screw to tighten the block up against the string. Now, you want it snug, but it doesn't have to be over tight. And that's pretty much it. Once you get it locked in place, oh, I will say one thing, you do want to make sure that it's centered in the middle of the saddle. But after that, once you get it locked in place, just set it to the side and then complete the process with all of the strings. Okay, the next thing you want to do is measure the amount of string you need um, from the bridge to the tuner. So with the low E string here, um, what I do is I put my hand on the fretboard to make sure I've got enough slack, lay the string across it, and pull it until I get to the tuner. And then I give myself just a little bit more space and then clip the string. Just clip the ball off, you don't need it on this kind of system. Next, you just feed the string through the tuner as usual and um, tune the string up. You don't have to tune it to pitch, just get it to the point where it's got enough pressure on it that the string's not going to slip. Once you get the first string done, you just repeat this process for the other five strings. Okay, so let's talk about how we want to set this up for a second. What we want is the bridge to be completely flush to the body, kind of like I've shown here. So what we're trying to do is while we're tuning this, we want to make sure that the bridge stays just like that, just in the right spot. Okay, so the way that I do this is when I tune up the guitar, I use the arm to push the bridge to the position that I want it to be in. And then I tune all of the strings to pitch. Now, I know at this point that it's not going to be perfect when I'm done. I just have to have a starting point. So what I do is I make sure that the bridge is flush with the body and then I tune all of the strings up to pitch while I hold the bar. That's important because you want to make sure that it's to pitch at the position that you want it to be in. Okay, so you can see our bridge is pretty close, but it's not exactly flush with the body like we want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push it down just a little bit and tighten up all the strings so we can get a little more pressure on the bridge. Okay, so you can see now we have the bridge where we want it. It's flush with the body, and uh, you may want to double check on the other side too just to make sure you didn't pull it you know, too far out of alignment there. You should be fine, but you may want to double check it. So the next thing we want to do is stretch our strings out um, because we want to make sure they're good and stretched before we lock them down. Uh, otherwise, we're just going to have to keep using the fine tuners to adjust the tuning. So let's go ahead and get any play out of the strings possible. So I'll say so far, this process has gone pretty smoothly, but uh, you know, something always goes wrong, right? I guess I don't know my own strength. So one of two things happened here. Either the string came out of the block or the string came out of the tuner at the headstock. Well, you can see here that the string is still in the block. So, what happened was apparently I just didn't get a good wrap on the tuner and it popped out. I was able to save the string, so no worries. Uh, like I said, this something always goes wrong doing this, right? That's why people get so frustrated with it. But you just have to be patient and get through it and you can get a guitar that will stay in tune for a very long time. 
So I got the B string back on, got it stretched out, got the E string stretched out, and everything tuned back up, and now I'm checking the uh, bridge again, and it looks like it's still a little low, so I'm going to make one more adjustment here and get the bridge exactly where I want it. All right, that looks pretty good. What I like to do is I like to go through the tuning process twice. So what I do is I tune all the way through once, start over at the beginning, tune all the way through again, and then I start for the third time. So, you know, typically when you're tuning a guitar, you're going to get some strings that go out of tune when you're first tuning it up, right? So that's why I kind of go through it twice because you may have some of that going on. After that, if you start the third time and you start tuning up, what you may notice is you'll get the first three strings perfectly in tune and then you'll move to the second three strings and they'll all be flat and you'll tune those up and get them perfectly in tune and you'll come back to these strings and they'll all be flat and you'll tune those up and you'll get those in tune then these will be flat and so forth and so on so what happens when you do that is your bridge starts to rise you just keep tuning up keep tuning up and this bridge will come up and you really don't want that you want to try to keep it as flush to the body as possible so, so how do you fix that? Well, this is where the screwdriver comes in. What you need to do is adjust the springs on the back on one side or the other. So, again, look at your bridge and see if it's pulled up some when you've done this. If not, if it's kind of straight, go ahead and get your first three strings in tune. Okay, and then check your second three strings That was a little flat. Let's see if it changed anything. Okay, so now this is a little flat. And so it's been a while since I've adjusted this, so I think it's about time to do it. So what you want to do, instead of tuning this back up to where it's pulling the bridge up more and you continuing to do that, instead, let's put some pressure on the back. We'll put pressure on the springs. They'll pull them more this way, and that'll pull the bridge down some. Yeah, everything is just slightly flat on this side and everything should be good on the other side. Let's check that again. Yeah, okay. So what I wanna do is I want to put more pressure on the low E side. So I'm going to tighten the spring that's on this side of the guitar, okay? So let me do this real quick. Uh, my guitar is a Phillips head screwdriver. Yours might be flat. I'm not sure. So I'm just going to give it just a little turn. Not much at all. I just want to put a little more pressure on this. So I'm going to check this now. And I can see that it's it's more flush than it was. I had pulled it up a little bit tuning. So, so now let's check everything. Those are perfect. 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 Okay. So that's all it takes. Once you get it into that situation to where you can get all of the strings in tune together, you're good to go. I mean, you've just got to get the balance right. You have to understand that the bridge is completely floating. So all of the tension of these strings makes a difference on how the other strings are in tune. So should be in tune now. Let's try it out. So what I like to do before I put the locking nut on is just to play around with it a little bit, loosen the strings up, and uh, make sure I can keep it in tune before I lock it down. So I'm gonna do that for a little bit, and then I'll get back to putting the nut on. Start at the top again. I mean, you just have to be patient with this. You have to continually check it and make sure it's right before you lock it down. Perfect, okay. So now, we're good to go and we're going to lock the nut down. Take these, we place them back over the strings. Okay, now we lock it down. So you want to make sure that these are snug, but you don't want to crank it down. Uh, you definitely don't want to break anything. You don't have to lock it as tight as you might think. And the same is true with these things on the end here, if I didn't mention that earlier. We should be good to go. All right, so doing that is probably going to put the strings out of tune a little bit. So let's check it again. So my E is a little sharp. So I'm going to come off of this just a little bit. 
And you can imagine putting pressure on the string probably sharped it some, right? All right, so we're good there. Same with the A. All of them are a little sharp. Expected that. Except the G, that's a little flat. So we're going to go ahead and turn it up some. But yeah, it doesn't take very much with these fine tuners to get it right. Okay, so again, just like before, we have to start back over at the top and make sure. Changing these can also affect the bridge, just like tuning it down here could. Um, this time, there's a bit of a different trick that you do. You don't go tighten the springs if this isn't right. All right, let me see if I can illustrate this. If your tuner dial, when it's in tune, is straight up and down like this, okay? So I think this would be flat. Anyway, imagine it's flat by this much. Tune it to this much past and do every string like that. And you'll be surprised that when you come back, a lot of the times, everything will be straight up and down. I don't know why, but that seems to be the trick that works. So let's check all this out. My E's still good. I don't know why I'm touching that. That does nothing. All right. G's still just a little bit flat. Okay, everything's in tune. All right, so let me give you a few more tips in case you're dealing with one of these. Just some things I've learned. Uh, if you have to do any work in the back, take the back plate off or you know anything like that. Um, if you've got the strings out, make sure you put a piece of tape over these or these little blocks will fall out and you do not want to lose those. So um, that's just one tip. I, every time I turn the guitar over, blocks all over the table. Thank goodness I use you know stuff like this. But uh, you know I knew I wasn't going to have to get back there this time, so I didn't put the tape on there. Although I got it out just in case. But uh, just a tip: put tape on there if you're going to turn it over. Another thing that I find I don't know if it's this guitar or what, but when I first pick up a Floyd Rose guitar, I've started to get to where I push it down, pull it up, push it down, pull it up a little bit. Um, kind of shakes it back into tune, you know what I mean? Um, another tip I was going to give you is for this very thing. Once you get to the point where your strings aren't quite in tune or you've, you've screwed these things all the way down, um, you're not at the end of your rope. Don't worry about it. What I always do is just screw them back up to middle position and then just loosen these things up and tune it with the tuners. Get it back in tune, lock it back down. Not a big deal really. But, I mean, I have to do that. I, this is the first time I've changed these strings since February, and it is October. And it was in tune when I picked it up. I mean, it's insane. Once you get these things set up, they stay in tune for a very long time. You may have to tweak this a little bit, but, you know, not really bad. All right, so let's uh, play with this a little bit and see if we can keep it in tune. Is it in tune? So yeah, it's a kind of a pain in the ass to set it up. I'm not going to lie, but man, it's worth it to have one that does something like this. I think it's funny that a lot of people are just like, oh, Floyd Rose, I'm out. But man, I mean, how cool is that? Anyway, I hope y'all liked the video today, and I hope it helps you out if you're trying to set one of these up. I hope y'all have a good day. Take it easy and keep playing.